to be praised. Let us say, Lord Jesus, you are Lord Jesus, you are the Lord Jesus, you are the Lord, you are the Lord King of Kings, you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords. Let us clap a hand for him and a shout of joy. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Oh, how awesome God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What chapter, what Bible verse did you read today? Ingoma, Tabo Chaka Richingoma, Igiche, Chambere, Murongo, Wagatato, Makome Chogiche. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter one, verse three to twelve, that's our reading for today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for reading that chapter. How many of you read that <laughs> verse? God bless you. How many of you were not able to read that verse? I, 
I see some people who repeatedly don't read, they always raise their hand. Okay, they chose not to read. I hope you trust that what we tell you is true in the word of God. We never lie to you. Reading the Bible is feeding your spirit. When you read the word of God, you are feeding the inner man. You don't have necessarily to understand everything you read every day. Just like you don't understand the, the, the nutrients in every food you eat, so is it in the spirit. But it helps our bodies to grow. And you become somebody. That's the way it is in the spirit. Whatever we eat from the word of God helps to uh, grow our inner person. We don't have to understand everything. Amen. Amen. So let's read our today's Bible reading. Chingoma, the book of Second Chronicles. Igicheni Chambere, Chapter Number One, Murongo Ambere, starting with verse one. Tugeze kumurongo wa chumi na na kabiri up to verse twelve. Mungu tuza kumeza hand. Deka deka tu gene du sumurongo mwe mwe. Nuko Salomo mwe ne Dawidi akomezwa mubgami bure. Witeka imana ye ibana nawe iramukuza chane. Now Salomo Salomo tage kabisra iribo se. Abatkware Batkwari Bihumbi, Nabatkwara Magana, Nabacha Manza, Nibi Komangomabdo Sebdomri Israeli, Hos, Nabatkware Bamazabase Kuruz, Nuko Salomajana, Nita and Oriose, Bajakukanunga, Kigi Bayoni, Kuko Ariho Ihema Giwan Orgi Mana, Yabaga, Yomose, Umgaragu, we take a Korea Mubutai, Arikisandoka Yimana. Dawidi yari yara izamu ye, aikura ikiriati ye yarimu, aijana aho ya itunga nirije. Kuko yari yara yihi, eh, yivambi ye ihema Yerusalemu. Are kuchotero chumu, chumuri inga chako zgue na besaleli, mgene uri, mgene huri, chaba gimbere yubu turobu witeka, aho ni osalomu ni tera niro baja gango bashaku witeka. Nuko salomo, aherako, Aja kucho tero chumuringa imbere yu witeka chawaga imbere ihema jibona niro. Agitambo ibitambo vyos kwa igihumbi. Mijoro yuo monsi imani wanekera Salomo iramu wirati nsaba ichushaka ngiguhi. Salomo asabizu witeka ti wagiri data dawidi imbaba zinyish. Ngiru mgami muchi mbochi. No no we take a man. He says that no one says that he data Dawidi ricomezgu. Kuko unjizu mgami wabandu vangara no mkungu guisi uginsh. No korero none ndagu sabakumu buge ngenu buhanga kugira ngon hamba gire igiugu chanje niere kabandu. Ninde wabasha guchiri manza abandu wabangana batiyo. Imani bugira salomiti kuko ibzo aribzo biri mumuti mawawe ndiwi sabiru butu unzi changwa ibinu changwa ichuba hiro changwa abakuwa angabapfe changwa kurama ahugu kisabiru buge njenu buhanga umenye kuchira banu banji manza abona kuimikie ubuge njenu buhanga urabi hawe kani nzaguha nubutu unzi nibi inu ni ichuba hiro Bitigeze kubonwa numwami numwe wo mubakubanjirije kandi no mubaza 
gukurikira ta uzagira ibihwanye nibyawe mwemere dukomeze gato turangize ku 28 salomo ava kukanunga kigibiyoni imbere yihema ryibonaniro agaruka i Yerusalemu ategeka abisiraeli salomo ateranya amagare nabagendera ku mafarashi kandi yarafite amagare gihumbi na maganane nabagendera ku mafarashi inzovu nibihumbi bibiri abishira mu midugudu bacuragamo amagare ni Yerusalemu ku murwa w'umwami kandi i Yerusalemu umwami ahagwiza ifeza ni zahabu bitekerezwa ko ari nkamabuye ndetse nibiti by'imyerezi atuma binganya nimivumu yo mu bibaya ubwinshi kana mafarashi salomo yaratunze yavaga muri egiputa abacuruzi b'umwami bayaguraga aramashyo icyo ryose bikiriwe igiciro cyaryo kwigare rimwe ryazamukaga rikava muri egiputa batanga gashekeri zifeza magana tandatu kwifarashi batangaga ijana na mirongo itanu niko bajyaga babitundira nabame babaheti na bisiria salomo amaramaza kubakira izina ry'uwiteka inzu no kubaka inzu y'ubwami amen amen as we read the whole of the first chapter and verse 1 of the second chapter in the english version new king james version now Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and, he, and the Lord, his God, was with him and exhorted him exceedingly. And Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to every leader in all, is, in all Israel, the heads of the fathers' houses. Then Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tabernacle of meeting with God was there, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But David had brought up the ark of God from Kirijas Jerim to the place David prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Now the bronze altar that, that Bezalel, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. Solomon and the assembly sought him there. And Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. On that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made, he, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. So Solomon came to Jerusalem from the high place that was at Gibeon, from, from before the tabernacle of meeting, and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities with the king and with the king in Jerusalem. Also the king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars as abundant as sycamores, which are in the lowland. And Solomon had horses imported from Egypt and Kiva. The king's merchants bought them in Kiva at the current price. They also acquired and imported from Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150,000. Thus, through their agents, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Chapter 2, verse 1. Then Solomon determined to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal house for himself. Amen. 
undi muntu wa gatatu waharaniye kugira ko kumugisha we tureba uyu mugoroba ni Salomo another person that we see tonight who struggle to claim his blessing is Solomon nkuko mubizi Salomo yari umwana wa Daudi as you know Solomon was the son of King David eh imana ari ramuhaye ubwenge bwinshi cyane God had granted him tremendous wisdom. Yarakome chane Salomon. He was so great, Solomon. Igiye chaba Salomon na telephone zawa gaho, changwe se email, fax. In the days, nivi nivi kore shoto kore shabzi huuta, ama SMS, ama ma WhatsApp, ama Viber nibza havaga. Ariko ama kuri yari yari geze kuisios. In the days of Solomon, people had no um, social media platforms like WhatsApp or communication technologies like emails or cell phones, but in his time, his fame spread all over the face of the earth. Solomon was so famous. But his fame or greatness did not come in a single day. He fought for it. Iyurebye ubuzima bwa Salomo cyangwa se uburyo Salomo yavutse yavutse mu buryo bu navuga bwari bugoye When you look at the life of Solomon and how he was born you can see he was born in difficult circumstances Salomo yavutse akurikira muri umunawe warumaze gupfa Solomon was born after his brother who had just died muri umunawe the brother whom David had begot from Bethsheba, the wife of Uriah. And God did not accept for that lad to live, he died. Solomon was so Solomon was lucky that David ended up marrying Bathsheba again among the many wives he had. And so Solomon did not have or did not demonstrate the opportunities of becoming who he became later if you looked at his background. Because there were sons of the first, second, and third wife who could have been potential candidates of becoming a king. And normally in history, the firstborn, the first son, is the one who succeeds their father in royalty. That's what David would have done. But that's not what happened. For some luck, Solomon ended up becoming the king. Out of his many brothers, he was chosen to become king. It was, it was not easy for him at all to rule in a country where his older brothers were living. It is easy for you to rule where you are not known. But it is difficult for you to rule people who are jealous of you, who are your stepmother's children, if I may say. Or maybe at least if he was the son of the first wife. But he was but for a son like Solomon, born of a mother whose story we know and how she ended up becoming um, the wife of, of King David out of uh, an affair, 
uh, it was difficult for the kingdom of Israel to understand that even the young, the brothers, the older brothers of Solomon. Even when he was about to be enthroned as a king, it caused a division between the priests and prophets. One party wanted to enthrone another, and another party wanted to enthrone another. So there was a division. It caused a conflict in his time when he was about to be enthroned as a king. Kandi noneho hagombaga bagombaga kwimika Salomo vuba vuba Dauda tarapfa ubundi umwami yamaze gutanga nicyo gihe himikwa undi ariko byabaye mukavuye mu buryo Daudi yavuye ku ntebe Salomo yicara ho vuba vuba zari yaranje mazitangaje and so they had to anoint him as king before his father could die. Normally, a new king would be enthroned after the former king is dead. But they had to make an arrangement that he gets enthroned very quickly before his father David dies. And and so they had to do that very quickly because the king who had just been enthroned, who had self-proclaimed as a king, uh, had a favor of the, some priests and some people in the kingdom and the royal people were supporting him. And so they decided to enthrone King Solomon immediately before David would die. At the time when this was happening, David was so old, he was lying on his bed in his in his palace, he didn't know what was happening outside. Haba emwa machenga ya wahanuzi kugira ngo bagire icyo babwira nyina wa wa nyina wa Solomon aje kugisaba Daudi vuba vuba kandi babyitira ngo ni imana yabivuze. Donc huko Daudi yizeraga banatani nabandi byatumye babuvuze ngo ni imana ibivuze isa byakira vuba vuba. Donc haba emwe inzira zamaguye kugira ngo azagere hari there were tricks made by prophets to, to go through the mother of the king to say, this is the one who is going to be the king. And so because David honored prophets, when the prophets said, this is what the Lord has said, this is the one to, be the, to become king, they had to take that as though it is true. It was a difficult process. This was amazing. The things that happened in, in King David's palace were incredibly amazing. Because enthroning a new king when the existing king is still alive is so strange. If you look in the second book of Kings, let me show you how somebody can come from very far. Second Kings chapter 1, if you can look at the title of that uh, chapter. Those who have the Kenya Rwanda veterans, can you just read the heading of that uh, um, chapter one? Muzindi bibiri ya nibiri mu niki nyarwanda bashize huwo mutu kuko mu kinyarwanda nibyabagaho in the Kenya Rwanda version you have the heading of that first chapter of second kings saying that while king david still lived he enthroned uh, solomon why because in Kenya Rwanda in the Rwandan culture no king would reign while the existing king is still igitabo cyambere cyabami gice cyambere nababwi cya kabiri mumba bari igitabo cyambere cyabami first kings sorry first kings chapter 1 Are you there? Eh, hand it's a good. 
Voilà. Daudi akiriho yimika Salomo. When David was still alive, he made Solomon king. Harimamvu abanditse bibiliya y'Ikinyarwanda bashize hu uyu mutwe. There is a reason why those who wrote the Kinyarwanda Bible had to give this heading like that. Umuni titre iyatira umuntu yagiye gusoma. Normally the heading would attract you when you are about to read the text. Ubuni nta mwami ndagira ngo mu mateka iye y'Abanyarwanda nta mwami wajye gahunda taratanga. I think in the normal culture and tradition of Rwanda no king, no king would ever reign when the existing king is still alive unless I'm mistaken. Byarabaye no muri Vatican u Pape yavuye ho ndi ajyaho nibi nibintu bidasanzwe. It also happened at Vatican. One pope uh, was replaced by another when he was still alive. It is unusual. For you to understand this, let me use this illustration. It is as if a husband tells her his wife and says, let me move away and another man come and live with you and marry you. Yet they are still living in the same house. That's the way it is. Dero Solomon, kugira ngu wagire kururi ya mganya, hawa yuwa ma intrigue menshi, ya ma, ama korosi menshi, yubu hanga nubu genge, nubu genge. And so for Solomon to come to the position of king, there were so many tricks that had to be undertaken. In that uh, first chapter of First Kings, there was a young man ready to be king. His name was Adonijah. Adonia. Adonijah. Kumurongo wakata nikicho chambele. Chapter 1 verse 5. Hanyuma Adonia mwene hagiti. Ari kuzaravu gati nzabu mngami. Mwibu ke kwa ha Absalomu era maze kufamura vzibu ka. Nawe ya chate kubu mngami kungufu. Dawudi ya lera gizibu za gobikome. Intebe ya liri yohe ya ba nabe chani mwurjo. Eh. Kukwe rafita wa gore benshi, buri mwa nasha kubu mwa mimbere. Havu kati, taonza cha na wale abene data ba nere kamukure ovu wa vubambu mwa. Ugo izo na ambara mwuzi mabuganyi mabuga daudi ya guanyi nazo. Verse 5, then Adonijah the son of Haggith exalted himself saying, I will be king. This is after the death of Absalom who also wanted to exalt him, himself to become king. David in his latter days had a lot of conflicts in the family. His sons wanting to replace him. So they were competing for the royal position. Because Adonijah was the young brother of Absalom. It's as if their mother, when they were still young, had told them, watch and be careful and make sure that you take over the throne. Absalom ya chate guhita na Daudi kungufu ngobu mngami. Kani bizari bizara angie. Iyo hataza umugabo urogo ya imigambi ya hitofel. Absalom wanted to, uh, to stage a coup d'etat against his father. And it was almost going to happen until God brought somebody to interfere, to interfere with the plans of a man called Hitofel. Hitofel yari yara angije gukura ho Dawdi. Yari umujana ama yaba gikambere muri konseye yibgami. Yari azi ndengenge zose za Dawdi akaminyani imbaragaze. Yari azi ibzari vugane na Absalom Dawdi agahunga. Ariko haza kuzundi mugabo, arogo yomigambi ya itoferi, bituma Dawud agaru kwa kunhewe. Ariko Absalomo arapfa. Ahithophel was in the inner royal council that advised the king, and he knew the mind of King David. He knew what to tell David to do, and how Absalom would take over uh, the throne. And so, another man rose who came and interfered with, with ideas and advice that made Absalom die instead of becoming king. Dekadusomu yumurongo muumveneza, kumurongo wakatanu, alavu ya ngonzabu muamu. Yitunga niriza magare, naba gendira kumafarashi, naba gabo mirongu itanu, boku java geni mbereye, bacha isibo. Icha kora, senabgo yigeze kumuchaha, bzatu marakarati, izo wabite weniki. Adonia ya rumu nubu ranga chane, kandi yavu utakuri kira absalomu mngase. Then Adonai, the son of Haggis, exalted himself, saying, 
uh, will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. And his father had not rebuked him at any time by saying, Why have you done so? He was also, he was also very good looking. His mother had borne him after Absalom. He was the son whom the father had cherished him so much. All the life of David and Absalom, he had never rebuked him because they had never seen any mistake. Adonijah, Adonijah. Adonijah, sorry. Adonijah. Adonijah had no single fault. He, he was a son whom the father had never rebuked before. He was the perfect son in the eyes of the father. Another thing the Bible mentions about Adonijah. The Bible says he was very good looking. And he was born after Absalom. Absalom before his death, the Bible says he was the most handsome young man in the whole nation of Israel. He had a lot of hair that when they shaved his hair, the hair would weigh about three kilograms. Yeah, donc, when he was running after his father, when he was fighting his father, the horse threw him above in the, in the branches and the hair was caught up in the branches and he ended up hanging because of the hair he had. He had a lot of long hair. And so his young brother was like him. It was obvious he would be king. The next verse then he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, who was the chief commander of the armies of David. He also spoke with Abiathar, the priest. Abiathar ni waru mutamzi ni waru kome ichogihe ni yakomo kaga munsi yokuaba eli aho Samueli yakuri yee. Abiathar was the uh, high priest, if we'd say, was the greatest priest. He came from the house of Eli. Ufite, ufite, ingawazi kushikikie, ni, ni toro, ni kakushikikira batamzi. Na kindi, urabunga. When you have the army supporting you and the church or the priest supporting you, there's nothing that can stand in your way. You mm -hmm. obviously become the king. Remember that in Israel, a priest would, would be taken as God almost because he would talk to God about people and talk to people about God. And so Adonijah went and convinced uh, the general Joab. My, my father is sick, he's old. He's now giving instruction from, from his bed. And yet I'm here. And the general said, that's true. I support you. But Joab said, we need the support of the priest. There they go to the to Abiathar. Abiathar said, of course, we've been waiting for this moment. And so they agreed together. Let's go. Let's go and enthrone you as king. While David is still alive. There was another priest, though, who worked together with priest Abiathar. They went to mobilize him as well. His name was Zadok. But he was an assistant priest. He was a junior priest. Verse 8. Benaya Benaya Guard the Republican. But Zadok, the priest, Benaya, the son of Jehoiada, uh, Jehoiada, Benaya was the one in charge of the royal guard, the, the armies, the soldiers who guarded the king and his palace. 
Nathan umuhanuzi Nathan the prophet Shimei nare yizanwari za David bo tibaraga huza na Adonai Shimei, Rei, and the mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonijah. You can see that the time of the enthroning, uh, king, of enthroning King Solomon, there were conflicts and divisions in the nation. In other words, Solomon was not welcomed by all. And yet plans are being made. Somebody to be enthroned is already decided upon. The head of the army is behind him. The Pope of the whole nation of Israel is behind him. Abiathar is behind him. Only the pastor of Gatenga has refused. And the chief of the royal guard and the prophet friend of David called Nathan who went to rebuke him after the affair with uh, Bathsheba. A man called Nathan who went to rebuke King David after having Uriah, her husband, the husband of Bathsheba, killed to marry her, his wife. And he was to confer with Adonijah, but he had received the vision that from the house of blood, that's where the king was to come from. Whatever Nathan told the king, the king took it as if it came from God directly. And Nathan says, what shall we do? How can we deal with this? How shall we claim this blessing for Solomon to become king? Verse 11. Verse 11. And Nathan so Nathan spoke to Beth Sheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Have you not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, has become king, and David our Lord does not know it? Come, please, let me now give you advice. He used a wise word to say, I want to give you advice, instead of saying, that says the Lord, because he knew what was happening in the king's palace. David was old. He could not remember some of the things that he said before. Because somebody might tell you, remember you told me this yet, you can't remember at all whatever you said. They are sometimes lying because they know you can't remember everything. And so he says, Bathsheba, I know that as soon as Adonijah becomes king, you're going to die. No, 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 no. Now I want to give you advice. Let's see the advice he gave her. Kumurongo, wachumi. Thirteen. Nakangai. Thirteen. Nagatatu. Doregi endu sangu mga midawidi umubiruti. Mga minyagasan. Tiwarahi umuja wawuti. Nukuri umuhungu wawe salomazima. Maze gutanga. Nuko 
ukivuga na numwami nange nibwinjire ngukurikire mpamye ayo magambo Verse 13, we see the adverse, go immediately to King David and said to him, Did you not, my lord or king, swear to your maid servant, saying, Assuredly, your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? Then while you are still talking there with the king, I also will come in after you and confirm your words. This is the adverse. Umwanya azaba ari majijingisha ngo nabikubwiye ryari ndahita ninjira mvuge ngo kandi nari impari ndabihamya nange namenye ko ari natano bivuze Daudi arabyemera murumva utwo tu intrigue ayo manyanga ariko yaraye gukingira ikintu bikomenda babwira how the king would be still doubting about those words i'll just move in immediately and confirm and remind him what he said now look at all these intrigues and these tricks here Something great was about to happen. They were ready to come along. What you mean, Kanga? But but since I was so much, I didn't want to shake shake. I feel like I'm going to need to move my side. 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 But sheba runama aramye umwami umwami aramubaza ati hari cyo ushaka kuko yari injiyemo 17 aramusubiza ati nyagasani warahi witeka imana yawe ubwira umuja wawe uti nuko umuhungu wawe Salomoni uzima maze gutanga akicara ku ntebe y'ubwami bwanje ariko none mwami nyagasani Adonia yimiye utabizi ubu yishe inka n'intama yimishije byinshi cyane ararika abana b'umwami bose na biyatari umutambyi na yowabu mugaba wingabo ari ku mugaragu wawe Salomo tiyamuraritse iyi yari veritri kwa ari abigenye yari yatumije abandi bose atumiza n'umutambyi atumiza n'umugaba wingabo ariko basiga Salomo urumva hari litije deja hari ikibazo gikomeye kubona abana b'ubwami bose batumiye hagasiga rumwe no kuvuga ngo uri yatuzamenyana nawe ni mara kuba umwami eh ariko nka natani wari ubizi yari yabonye imigambi yose ukimeze ngo none mwami nuko none mwami nyagasani 22 Abisirayeli bose baguteza amaso ngo bamenyeshe uzima ingoma yawe umaze gutanga kandi dore mwami nyagasani numara gutanga ugasanga basogokuruza utabigenjeje utyo jewe numuhungu wanje Salomo twakwitwa abagome akivugana numwami inde winjiye bamenya natani umuhanuzi natani agira te ari injira babwira umwami bati nguyu muhanuzi natanaraje ageze imbere y'umwama mu ikubita imbere yubamye natanabaza umwama ati harya mwami nyagasane ni we wavuze ngo adonia ni uzima umaze gutanga kicara ku ntebe y'ubwami wahinduye verse ati ndagira ngo menye ko ari adonia uzima mbimenye vuba kuko umwami yagombaga nawe kumusuka wa mavuta pardo umuhanuzi nguko samwe yari abigenje kuri daudi Eh ngo harya mwami nyagasani ni we wavuze ngo Adonia ni uzima umaze gutanga kicara ku ntebe y'ubwami Dore uyu munsi yamanutse yicinka n'intama yimish eh byimishishe byinshi cyane ararika abana b'umwami bose n'abatware bingabo na biyatar umutambyi ubu bararya baranywera imbere ye bavuga ngo umwami Adonia aragahoraho ariko jewe umugaragu wawe na Sadoku umutambyi na Benaya mwene Yohayada n'umugaragu wawe Salomo kia turaritse mbese ibyo byabaye kwitege ko rya umwami data buja kandi utabwiye abagaragu bawe uzicara ku ntebe y'umwami data buja umaze gutanga umwami aramubwira ati pamagarira betisheba eh betisheba yarakicunamye hari yahanze ati mwigize hino baramuhamagara ritaba ahagarara imbere y'umwami nuko umwami ararahira ati kuko uwiteka horaho wacunguye amagara yanje mu byago byose uko nakurikiye uwiteka imana ya Israeli nuko nakurahi uwiteka imana ya Israeli nti nukuri umuhungu wawe Salomo ni buzima amaze gutanga akicara ku ntebe y'ubwami mu kimbo cyane nukuri niko ndi bubitegeke uyu munsi batishema yuna mbere y'umwami aramuramye aravuga ati umwami nyagasani aragahoraho umva uko Salomo yagiye ku ntebe ibitindama uko niko Salomo yagiye ku ntebe umwami aramwemerera 
Basically, if you read from verse 16 up to verse uh, 30, you hear the story of how King Solomon became king. He eventually became king through that process. And he became great. Solomon, he became famous and all people knew about him. Uh, but now you understand the background of his story before becoming the king. And so after reigning as king, uh, Solomon, there is something Solomon asked of the Lord. Where we read in Second Chronicles chapter 1, after he had been enthroned as king, Israel and all Israel has accepted him as king because David proclaimed it and he enthroned him and they all followed him and then he realized he had a big problem. A big problem. He's going to sit on the throne of the Lord where David the king was sitting people are so eager to know what I'm going to bring to them everybody is expectant to see something there are those who are ready for good and those who are ready for my failure I don't know who to consult to, to seek advice from. Because it is challenging for me to know who loves me and who doesn't love me. And so the Bible says Solomon gathered all Israel. He called all the captains. Of thousands and hundreds. He called the judges of the nation. He called every leader of the country. He called the heads of the father's houses. And he told them today. All of you. We have to stop our work. I'm taking you somewhere. All of you leaders. All of you great people. All of you captains of thousands. We have somewhere to go all of Because us. the throne I occupy, I may have a trouble from it. To be a king is one thing. But to show the capacity as a king is another thing. To receive a blessing is one thing. But to raise and to maintain that blessing and use that blessing well is another thing. To receive a position is one thing. But to maintain honor in that seat is another Solomon thing. Amenyako. Solomon understood that. He has no other source for his strength. There is no other source for his help. He was a king. There's nothing else he needed. But he says the tangible thing is governed by the invisible. I see the visible blessing. I am a king. But I need a spiritual blessing. I need a spiritual blessing. I have the physical blessing now. I am a king. I have people I rule. Israel obeys me. But there's something behind invisible. And that is a spiritual blessing. When you have that blessing, the visible things go smoothly. What people see with the eyes go smoothly. When you have an invisible blessing, that is a spiritual blessing. I need that blessing. He had this in his heart. 
bose and he took the whole nation the bible says it was a huge congregation they went at the summit of gibeon the mount the Bible says that's why was the tabernacle of meeting of Moses which Moses had made in the wilderness. The wilderness of Moses had the, the, the tent of Moses had two areas. Besides the court, there was the holy and the holy of holies. That tent was at Gibeon. Another thing, when Moses was building this tabernacle, a young man called Bezalel of, of, from the family of who he had made the bronze altar where they had to burn meat to be accepted by God. That altar was before the tabernacle. But at the time, at Gibeon, the Ark of the Covenant was not there. Because David had taken it from Kiriath Berim. Kiriath he took it to the mountain to Jerusalem it was stationed at Obedidom's house for three months David did not take it to Gibeon but he set it up in the, on the mountain of Jerusalem in, in a place called Zion and he put in a normal tent and he placed the ark there and then he set up a unit of singers who sang before the they were sons of Azaph sons of Haman sons of Yedutun there were three units of Levites who came from Gerithon and those who came from Korah they all surrounded the tabernacle the, the, the but the, all the sacrifices were offered at Gibeon the songs of worship constant worship was at Zion but the sacrifices uniting people to God were at Gibeon Israel has such times as well when the ark was at Gibeon and the priest Samuel was at Shiloh. Once they would go to see Samuel, another time they would go up on the mountain. And so on that mountain, that's why he went. So the reason why he went there, he wanted to offer sacrifices to God to accept his prayer. And the altar of sacrifice was in Gibeon. The Bible says he went up when he arrived there he went with a huge much of people they offered burnt sacrifices of about 100 1,000 sacrifices. A whole day of sacrifices. Singing to God. And the smoke rose before God. In that night. The Bible says he fell asleep. He spent the night in a prayer. And saying God. I offered you sacrifices of praise. I want you to answer me. Then he prayed. In that night the voice of God came. We have read Second Chronicles chapter one, verse seven. The Bible says on that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, "Ask what shall I give you?" In that moment, Solomon answered the Lord. And Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to David, my father. I had, he had to first remind God what he had done with his father. You have shown great mercy to David, my father. David killed the one who was supposed to be my father. 
He killed Uriah and took his wife and married her. I was born in that chaos. Yet you showed great mercy to my father. I am a son born out of the mercy of the Lord. I was a son, I'm a son born out of the forgiveness to my father. God, I remind you, I don't deserve to be cared about by you. Because the husband of my father was killed by David. And then he married my mother. I was born from that couple. And so God, before I tell you what I need, I first thank you for blessing my father with the, sons of my father. the sins of my father. The sins of my mother. You forgave them. Tonight we are here. The forgiveness has been offered. The sins of our Father. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Today when God sees us, He doesn't look at us through our parents, but through our Father and mother. God offered mercy for us who are bold to be answered into His plan. So we must claim to go where God predestined for us without any fear without any fear because God gave mercy hallelujah hallelujah hey yes your origin should not deny your destiny your background and the people you come from. Today as I speak to you, they are not the problem for you not to go to that place. The forgiveness of God has been offered. The mercy of God has been offered. Don't look at your father. Not your mother. To say I was born out of this situation. Forget that. Forget that. Forget that. Don't say my mother. Was born after going to the witches. There was mercy. That's why you're a child of God. There is mercy. Hey, hallelujah! Hallelujah! We never, Papa. Let look at your father and say he bore me out of drunkenness. David. David. Gave birth to Solomon. Gave birth to Solomon out of murder. But he's the one God has a plan with. If God can have a plan with people like Solomon, how much more if you have not gone through such a circumstance? Amen. Amen. David, he understood the things. To become king. Is one thing. But to have the authority as a king is another thing. You can, you can lose your self confidence because of people around you. He's the one given to us to lead us. Mm. Uh -huh. Let him lead those who don't know him. And when you hear such a word as you pass by, you lose control. You lose control. Solomon says, yes, they have enthroned me as a king. I'm like a toy, but I need the spirit behind it. It's like enthroning a dead body. And I'm going to call God to breathe his spirit. For you to have that job. To have that family. To have that money. It's not enough. You need another thing. You need a spirit. There is a spiritual blessing you need. What is a spiritual blessing? Authority. Authority. Ability. Umurava. Courage. Kuitanga. Commitment. Ibzuni, ni, 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 ni,
to be gentle, not to be discouraged, a vision to see far. Those are spiritual. The physical you have them, but you can't see far. We need the spiritual blessing tonight. We need the spiritual blessing today. We need the spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be with things and to stay longer with things. To be, to be in something is a physical blessing. But to stay longer in that thing is a spiritual blessing. Amen. Amen. To lead people to becoming to become a leader of people is a physical blessing. To be admired and loved by people is a spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. 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 To have a body, this physical body, the body you see is a physical blessing. But to have health, a healthy life, is a spiritual blessing. To have these eyes, is a physical blessing. But to cause them to see, is a spiritual blessing. To have hands, is a physical blessing. To have strength in your hands, is a spiritual blessing. To have legs, is a physical blessing. But to walk, is a spiritual blessing. To have your stomach, is a, spirit, is a physical blessing. But to be satisfied, is a spiritual blessing. To have things is a physical blessing. But to be satisfied is a spiritual blessing. To have a bed is a physical blessing. But to have sleep is a spiritual blessing. To have a mouth is a physical blessing. But good words is a spiritual blessing. Hallelujah! 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 You need that blessing, don't you? You need that blessing. Parents. Parents. Mothers to have to have a good chest is good, but to have uh, breast milk is another thing. To have, to have a womb is good, but to bring out a child from that womb is another thing. To have a head is good, but to have a sharp mind is wonderful. We have people who are full with the physical things, but they are empty in the spirit. If you meet a dead body lying on the bed, you would think it is a live body. But when you see it not moving, then you know it, is, it has no spirit. That's why I tell you this word. To have worth and tangible physical things without a spirit in them is a dead body. Do you hear me well? To have a house without peace in it is a dead body. This is what Solomon discovered. For me to have the throne... I'm a king. I'm reigning over thousands. Mm -mm. No way, it's not enough. Something is lacking. Something is missing. I need, I need the spirit behind it. You need the accompanying spirit behind what you're doing. I don't know whether you understand me. Yes, sir. Jesus, 
Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and the rest, in other words, seek the spiritual things, but the physical, there's nothing that can stand in the way. When you want your grass to become blue, you expose it to the sun rays. Green. A green. Green grass, once it's exposed to light, sun rays, it will become, uh, it will change the color. But physical chat is there. Force invisible, it to Mahaba, Yindi Kule, it chats in Ganatu and Gafizike Kirad. Arikitum Hahindu Kibar, Harikitaboneka, Imirase Izua invisible. Wanga Urari, Arikitum Kuleria with a Hindu, Nuko Arikin di Chumuka Kitaraboneka. The physical appearance of the grass as green is there. You can see, you can touch it. But what transforms the color is what is invisible. You can have all the physical things, but what changes and maintains your color is what is invisible, which is the spirit. When will a coal become black? Before you burn a wood, can it become black? It will remain a tree. But it it now has to go through somewhere to become black. Oh, hallelujah. You are who you are also. You are blessed as the way you are. But you need something, some spiritual power to change things in your life. That's what they call uh, chemical and physical or physics uh, phenomena. You also need the spiritual phenomenon. Yes, sir. When you move in, you see a lot of people who are going to be in the world. You see a lot of people who are going to be in the world. Jesus told his disciples and said, Just go the way you are and sit in Jerusalem and wait until the spiritual phenomenon has, given, has been given to you. Peter, don't you have a mouth? When the spiritual phenomenon comes, you say what is different from what you said today. When the spiritual phenomenon comes, you say what is different from what you said today. God wants to give you a spiritual blessing for your words to become sweeter than the former words. That your functioning will be simpler and easier for you and that you do more than before. Your perceptions be changed. Let's not delay. Verse 8, and Solomon, and Solomon Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to David my father and have made me king in his place. We had read this part already. Abraham <laughs> Now, O oh Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. 
He was telling God, you know what he was saying? Man, God, if I look at myself now, he's beginning to claim great things. I don't look at myself as the president of Israel, but the president of the whole world. The, the, people, the people you gave me to lead are as many as the dust of the whole world. I doubt whether the population at the time was even a million people in Israel at the time. Let's admit perhaps there were three million people. Because they those who made it to the uh, promised land Canaan after the wilderness were about a million people many of them had died in the wilderness you remember and so let's count from the time they entered Canaan led by judges 400 Let's assume uh, the, the, the rate of the population growth was perhaps maybe uh, each family had like uh, three children or they're multiplying more, but let's assume there were three or four million people at the time because there was a period of 480 years after, the, after they had crossed over to the promised land. So that's when he was telling God, you have made me king over people as many as the dust, dust of the multitude of the world. Hallelujah. He was, when, he, when you are talking to God, you don't have to talk to God about micro thoughts. You have to have big thoughts, macro thoughts. God does not have a microscope. He has the microscope. Have big dreams. God is a God of big dreams. What language what language I, in what language are you talking to God? Is, is this a giant's language? Listen. So he asked him. Now uh, give me wisdom. God said, I'll give you wisdom. Because verse 10 he says, Now give me wisdom and the knowledge. That I may go out and judge this great people. Then God said, I'll give you wisdom and knowledge. Because you ask for the spiritual, I'll give you uh, the bonus of, what, of uh, physical blessings. I give you wealth. I give you things. I give you honor. Such as none of the kings have had who were before you, nor shall any after you have the like. And Solomon went home. Hadn't he taken his spring? He didn't have to stay longer on the mountain. God gave him wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He asked for something very, very simple, but powerful. It is something that you cannot quantify on a scale. If you prayed and said, God, give me a car, and you just go out and you find a car ready waiting for you, say, Oh, God, thank you so much. Because the car is physical. But when you say a prayer for such invisible things, even when you don't see them, it has happened already. Is it, is it Listen. 
Imani wa hubgengi. <laughs> May God give you wisdom. Imani bi heru bwenge. May God give you wisdom. Kugira ngo mubashe kwakira ibikomeye. For you to be able to receive great things. Munyemere gato ya niruke. Allow me to go a little faster. Gato ya cyane. Just a little bit. Igice cha 9 muri igice cha kabiri. Ingoma za kabiri cyenda. Chapter 9 of Second Chronicles. Kubera ubwenge bwa Salomo. Because of the wisdom of Solomon. No neo rero Salomo. Ajiye, ajiye now Solomon is going to become great and famous. Hadn't he said that, didn't he say that his people are as many as the dust of the, of the earth? Let's now see this. Chapter 9. Now, when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to, the Lord. to test him with hard questions. Having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. Now, the wisdom he had is beginning to attract people, bringing physical things. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain it to her. This lady, this queen was amazed by the protocol that is in the house of a man who is full of the wisdom of God. Abonyinzuyubatsubwose and when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, of course, including the house of the Lord and his own house, the food on, on his table, the sitting of his servants, the service of his waiters, and the apparel, this, his cupbearers, and the apparel, and his entryway by which he went out to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Verse 9. Solomon and she, gave, and she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance, and precious stones. There are never were any spices such as those the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Now you can see, remember he had prayed and said, you've given me people as many as the dust, the dust of the earth. And so we see now kings and, and rulers of, of the world coming to seek and consult his advice to go and implement his strategies in, in their kingdom. Verse 13. The weight of God the weight of gold that came to Solomon yearly was 666 talents of gold. Besides what oh, the traveling Lord. merchants and traders brought, and all the kings of Arabia and governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. I want you to understand this. He is almost ruling the entire world. Because of one small thing. A spiritual blessing. A spiritual blessing. I pray for a spiritual blessing upon you. I pray for that blessing upon you. Listen. Verse 15. And King Solomon made 200 large shields of hammered gold. Verse 17. 
ayitera wizahabu itunganijwe intebe ya mahembe y'inzovu moro itari migiti amahembe y'inzovu hanyuma apakaraho zahabu ninde wicaye kuri iyo ntebe muri isi Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. No other king in the world had ever done such a thing. No tree was included in his seat. Yarimeze <laughs> Aku mbere yu kuichara ubanza kukanda gira kukatebe kiza habu Uka wana kuichara nesu mm. Uyari Salomo mm-hmm. Moreover, the throne had six steps Umu ana wafutse mwurijo buteme uwe Hari kuimana hinduri ya mateka Umu ana wafutse mwurijo kida kwiri Hari kuimana ya zamo uye Ndagira mwurijo yako amateka ya wena huri eno kukomera kwa uwe The throne had six steps with the footstool of gold Which were fastened to the throne Yo, this is a young man who was born in a, in a very shaky background. I want to tell you that your background has nothing to do with your greatness. Verse 19. Verse 19. Tandebe yigeze kubazwa isanayo kuko yari umwami urutabandi bawe 12 lions stood there one on each side of the six steps nothing like this had been made for any other kingdom because he was a king above all other kings ibintu umwami yanyweshaga byose byari zahabu ibirirwaho byose mu nzu yibiti byikibira kirebanon all King Solomon's drinking vessels were gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. This was a rare forest. It was not a common one. Let's go to First Kings chapter 5. First Kings chapter 4 verse 9. 29. 29. For the king around the veterans, chapter 5, verse 9. Uh, 5 and 9. Are we together, brethren? He asked for something very small, simply to say, give me wisdom. I don't know whether you understand me. Can you hear me? Just one spiritual thing. That opened many tangible blessings doors. Let me tell you where you are better than those of the world. You have, you have the spiritual secret. Chapter 4 verse 29. Chapter and God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. I want you to know that these wise people included even astrologers of Egypt who could study astrology and understand the times. But Solomon was above all of those people. Solomon 
The men of the east included those of Babylon and, and, and those who come from Nimrod in, in the Tower of Babel. These are people who see stars and be able to interpret what each star means. But Solomon, the Bible says, he was above all of these people. Verse 31, for he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, the Israelite, and Haman, Chalco and Dauda, the sons of Mehol, and his fame was in all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Also, he spoke of trees from the cedar tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out, springs out of the way, wall. Solomon would go to a forest and tell you the lifespan of each tree there and tell you the, the ingredients needed for that tree to grow. He would even see the house up and understand how it grows. He knew many, many things. He spoke also of animals, of birds, of creeping things, and of fish. Botany and zoology all originate from Solomon. He knew the classification and categorization of all animals. Why? Why? Because of a prayer he made one night and asked for wisdom at Gibeon. I pray that you will ask for wisdom this night. He and men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Kings of all nations would come to hear his wisdom and he would give you plans and strategies for governing their nations. This man was incredible. Who could ever think he was the son of Bathsheba? Who could ever think that somebody like someone who was out of the minds of people God placed him on the throne. The Bible says, strive for the spiritual things. Jesus says, seek spiritual food. Seek spiritual food. Speak the, issue, the things of life. Speak the th seek the things of life. The physical will be granted to you. You must strive today. To receive your spiritual blessing. You stand up and let's give thanks. May God bless you abundantly. Hallelujah. Let me ask you one small question. Solomon's wisdom amazes you, right? Aren't you amazed? Eh? Right? Yes, we are Jesus said, A greater than Solomon is here. Uruta Solomon. A greater than Solomon is in you. Paul said, when I knew him, 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 I 
Paul yari afite ubwenge burutu bwa Salomo I received the revelation of great mysteries that had been hidden from all men of from the foundation of the world Paul was wiser than Solomon kwera kwera afite Yesu because he had Jesus uyu mugoroba tonight ndagira ngo ubwire Yesu I want you to tell Jesus yuzuzu ubwenge muri wowe to fill you with wisdom anyuzuzu ubwenge to fill me with wisdom akuzuzu ubwenge to fill you with wisdom kugira ngo turebe kuruta Solomon that we may see more than Solomon tuvuge kuruta Solomon speak more than Solomon dukore kuruta Solomon work more than Solomon iyo niyo migisha yawe those are your blessings mana ndagusaba muri uyu mwana god i ask you in this moment we garagaze reveal yourself uri muri twebwe you are in us kandi urasha salomo ubwenge and you are wiser than solomon ndasaba ngunyereke mwana i pray that you reveal yourself where ku mwene data reveal yourself to the brother icha gomba kugeraho what they need to achieve icha gomba gukora what they must do muri ibi bihe in such time yes jesus ndabizi neza i know clearly kwari usha salomo ubwenge that you are greater than the greater than so much because we have kuka gufite because we have igaragaze data we have you reveal yourself for god igaragaze mwami manifest yourself for god ubwenge give us wisdom we kujijuka give us understanding ni wewe bwenge bwacu you are our wisdom garagara muri twe manifest in our midst yemera ngugaragaze allow me to manifest you in my life mumugisha umwuka bless me spiritually mumugisha umwuka give me a spiritual blessing kugira ngo singire ibyo mubiri that i might get the physical blessing all the glory is yours utahana na buri muntu wese go with everybody home get them home safe in jesus name amen amen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mutare na mahoro y'Imana. Go with the peace of God. Tuzakomeza ku munsi wo guhindurirwa ma. We we'll continue on transfiguration day. Munga wabariki sana. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.